feel like there was a time period where I would go, okay, if I just could get this one thing, if I could get a late night spot, if I could get into Montreal, if I could get um, even just locally in New York, like if I could just get on this hot show, this weekly show that's popular, um, I'll, I'll make it, I'll be in. If I could just get an agent, you know, when you're starting out, you, you uh, think that there's one thing that's going to change everything. Um, yeah. and then I'll be on my way and I'll become a famous comedian, you know, and it's more really overly simplified in your brain. Well, then of course, the further you go, the more complicated it becomes and nothing means what you thought it meant. Um, and you know, my dream was to host a talk show and it actually came true, which at the time felt like destiny and it felt right. And it felt I mean, I still was like, I can't believe this is happening. Is this real? Yeah. Um, but I, it felt like earned and it felt, um, you know, like it made all, all made sense um, given the path of, and the choices I had made. But now looking back, I look at that moment, which is on paper, a high point in my career, like in terms of like my credits and my IMDB and all those things, that's like probably the peak of my career at this point. Um, as a comedian and I look back and I, now I go, God, I was so lucky that that happened. And it, it almost feels like an accident. Wow. Now that I know how hard it is, I know that I earned it. I know that I was worthy of it, but it, um, a lot of, since then I have not been able to replicate that. And that's been really, um, that has been one of the hardest things to mentally understand and process of like, Oh, things don't just happen the way you want them to after, you know, and I thought, Oh, I've, I've, I had a talk show. Well, now I'm on my way. It's going to keep going up, 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 up from there. And that's just not how it's happened. You know, I've done things that are to me, huge achievements since then. Um, like major accomplishments that I can't, I don't, I don't dismiss at all, but in terms of money and profile and that kind of thing, I have not had, and power, I haven't had that since. And I, I felt like for a long time I was chasing that high again and it was just making me miserable trying to chase it. So I think the pandemic and, and probably writing my book and like a couple other things all happening over the past few years has really made me like come to a place of acceptance of like uh, of knowing, you know what? I may never, it might be over. My career could be over at any moment uh, the way that I thought it would. And I need to start understanding and removing, I, I mean, I definitely was someone who had all my self identity wrapped up in career. And I've let go of that, a lot of that, but there's still some lingering. It's one of the major questions of my solo show is, you know, should I quit or is it over for me or what, why, why keep doing this if it sucks so much, you know, if the business, (laughs) like we talked about, why keep going, why keep doing this? And so those questions are still unanswered fully for me, but I have, I feel myself right now, just like, it's almost like when you're gripping something really tightly and you just start to (laughs) relax the grip and you're like, I'm letting go. Uh Oh, 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 it's scary. It's going to fly away. Right. And that's how I feel. I feel like I'm letting go of it and I'm scared. I'm really scared because I'm really at a crossroads in a lot of ways in my life. And I feel myself going well, I don't know. Maybe I'll never, maybe I'll just stop. But then what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't know. But I also could get a phone call the moment the strike is over for a job and I'll be like, okay, I'm right back in. (laughs) Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think we're all like junkies. We're like adrenaline junkies. I don't know what it is. Cause I, you know, like I said, you're not alone I, me and so many of my friends have mm-hmm. had these exact same conversations and these this same kind of feeling of free fall. And I'm so appreciative of your honesty. 
you know, and your openness to talk about it because it was one of the things when I was really going through it. And of course it started during the pandemic (laughs) or right before I felt like it for me, it started right before the pandemic, just an absolute, like, am I, is this worth it? Am I going down the right path? Like, am I able to sustain this? This is like a lot, you know? So I just felt, I just felt like nobody talked about that part. No one would talk about it. Like no one would talk about like that they're questioning their path. Nobody would talk about that. I don't know if I actually really like this, you know, because Mm -hmm. that's part of the complicity of, you know, us as writers and performers of like, we are freaking miserable sometimes Mm -hmm. in some circumstances and situations. And we have to put a smile on our face and we cannot talk openly to our peers about the stress, the unhappiness, the questioning. That's what I I actually realized I lost the thread earlier of what I was going to say because I started talking about Crystalia. Um, <laughs> that there's <laughs> not only the fear of speaking out and critiquing our business, but we also yeah. are in a business where if you don't project success and upward movement yes. at all times, it yes. seems like you're a failure and failure is like a plague in this business and openly saying, hey guys, I'm struggling actually yeah. might harm your career because I've seen yes. it in myself where like I'll look at someone's social media and be like oh they're not doing well mm, I guess they're out of the biz you know like I mean I'm not consciously yeah thinking mm-hmm. that but you do start to go well I'm not going to call on them to come and work for me or you know like you, yeah. you, so mm-hmm. it's like constantly mm-hmm. reminding people I'm existing I'm here I'm performing yeah. I'm still a comedian I'm still a writer you know mm-hmm. like and so that's exactly what you were saying is like, you know, it's hard to um, admit any vulnerability, yes. um, questioning or not liking it and things aren't all rosy all the time. And um, I think, yeah. you know, we get brutally rejected so much. I mean, and I'm yeah. talking things that would break <laughs> a normal person <laughs> happening once, but it happens to you <laughs> several times a year that I don't think many people understand the resiliency that's required. <laughs> and always with the thing you care the most about. Yeah. 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 It requires a tremendous amount of resilience. Yes. You know, now it just doesn't even phase me. Yeah. Other than like, I'm so <laughs> sick of this shit. I'm sick of it. 